Welcome to The Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of The Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello everyone, welcome to the special edition of The Miracle You, the Awakening Through Moments of Choice book series with Mary. Throughout the series, Mary will share with you her insights and feelings on our story that was shared in the book from my perspective. We know that what she has to share will enhance your experience reading the book. Let's get started. Here's Mary. Hi. And welcome to this episode of the Awakening Through Moments of Choice series. In this episode, I'll be talking about my wake-up call and 9-11. I want to talk to you about this to give you a deeper understanding from my perspective of our journey. If you don't have the book yet, you can purchase it at Amazon using the link in the show notes. I want to start with the roundtable quote channeled by Vince. When you live from the outside in trying to find happiness and fulfillment, there will always be something missing. The happiness and fulfillment come from inside you. Then it can be shared with the outside world. So Vince talks about his 9-11 experience and what was missing in his life in the story. And I wanted to share with you where I was on 9-11. I was five years into my real estate career. I was in the right place at the right time. It seemed like everything I touched turned to gold. It just was that way. So I was too busy and too involved. And then I was having the best time of my life up to that point. I was married and I had two beautiful children and I was busy and productive competing in the real estate world, and really serving my clients well. And then 9-11 happened, and I was in shock like everyone else. I was actually at a REMAX sales meeting that morning, actually on the way to that, and heard it on the radio and walked in, and I I felt so happy to have a community that I could be with during such a tragic and unknown time. And of course, everyone was so blown away by what was happening that morning. And we recognized and took time to observe a moment of silence. And it's as if everyone went through the meeting like robots. We just did it. But we were together and there was something to that. So after the meeting, I drove home and there were a million questions in my head and a million questions in everyone else's head, like, what does this mean? And What's next and where do we go from here? And I came home to my husband at that time. His name was Russ. And of course, he had the TV on and he just had this look of absolute desperation. And that made me feel even more desperate. I didn't know what was going to happen to me, my real estate career, my family, the United States, the world. I didn't know. And I remember he and I just sat there. All day as the world stopped. We were glued to the television just like you were. We had no idea. And then probably just like you, the next day was like, wow, and still glued to the TV and the next day. But then, you know, we had to get back to work. And what I was focused on is what's going to happen to the market? What's going to happen to my clients? What's going to happen to my future? That's really all I was focused on. I was just focused on the outside and how the outside affects me and affects my life. And of course, you can tell by what I've said that I cared very deeply about everyone, but my focus had to get back to getting back to work. I couldn't just sit and watch TV for days. And I knew there had to be a change. And so I did what I could. I did it from an old mindset. I did what my broker told me to do, and I moved on. 
What I realize now is I miss the lesson of that big wake-up call. I miss the lesson of what was I missing in my life and why did this happen not only to me but to you and to the world and what did I need to learn from it? And honestly, I didn't get an answer. I don't think I really even knew how to ask the question. So I just continued on with my life. And I just put my head down and continued to work. Working was safe. I learned how to follow the rules and do what people needed and wanted me to do. And in this case, it was following the rules to have a successful real estate career, which meant no time for me. And it was following all those rules that I learned as a child and from school and society and people I respected. And honestly, it was following the rules that my husband had set for me, how to work hard, how to have a good work ethic, how to show up every morning. And I learned a lot from that. But as you can tell, I was really living a life of just being a robot. There wasn't anything more that I was gleaning from 9-11. And like I said, I wasn't really even asking the questions. I called this a wake-up call, but it was truly a moment of choice. I didn't know that. I didn't even know it was a moment of choice. And like Vince, I just continued on following the rules. But wake-up calls get bigger and more personal. My wake-up call came five years later. Believe me, this one I listened to. Here I am in my gown and socks with my feet dangling high above the floor as I sit and wait on the examining room table. I'm waiting at 40 years old to see my friend and cardiologist. As I'm sitting there, I have time as I wait to question why I'm on this table. How did I get here? Who have I become? I had become a stressed out, successful realtor, mom, wife. I was stressed out in all areas of my life. And while I was sitting there on that table questioning my future, My present was trucking along in the habits and patterns I had created and was living. I had it all. Two beautiful sons, the big house on the hill, a booming business, a vacation every quarter. But where did all that outside happiness lead me? Here, freaked out, stressed out, and wondering what I was going to do next. I knew, though, I knew this was a knocking on the door to my heart. It was the empowered part of me, the non-physical part of me, getting my attention. Did I know it was a wake-up call at that time? No. I didn't even know what a wake-up call was at that time. But the thing is, it was waking me up in the middle of the night with my heart racing. I was scared. And it wanted my attention. It wanted me to listen. It took a while, but I did. I first listened to the doc when he opened the exam door and exclaimed, Mary, what are you doing here? Stress will kill you. And I listened a week later when I was back to my normal life, doing my thing, doing my stressed out life, and another friend This one, a psychic at the local fair said, Mary, you must stop now or you will be in the hospital for a year. Okay, now it had my attention. My heart had my attention and I knew I had to make changes fast. And I did. I knew I was going to die. And that was a moment of choice for me. Was I willing to die with two children, one who was 18 and one who was 14? The threat of that death got my attention and it changed my life. And it took me, like I said, to Aloria. And she shared with me that that path of dying would change not only my life, but so many people's lives. 
And what did that mean to me? Was I really ready to end my life just because I couldn't continue on the only way I knew? I couldn't imagine that. I knew things had to change. I moved into action. I went to therapy and it was unsuccessful. I tried couples therapy and that was even worse, believe me. Neither worked in my case because we were just reliving the past and that caused more pain, more shame, and more stickiness. I was stuck. And I literally had to summon the courage to go on a personal retreat with Aloria. Me? Do something for myself? Leave my children for a weekend? Spend the money on me? No way. But I did it because I was afraid and I was listening. I was so stuck in the old rules, my old perceptions, that you know what? I couldn't even make any progress at that personal retreat. I was there for three days and I could not make a journal entry. I was just stuck. And I feel for Aloria, who had to work with me, and she did. She actually touched my heart the best she could, the best that I would allow. And it did make a difference. I came away from that retreat knowing that things were going to have to change and fast. And I knew that I didn't have a clue who I was and what I was going to do about moving forward in my life in a new way that meant I was going to be authentic and be me instead of the robot that I had become. Like Vince shared in the book, now I can look back and see the many small wake-up calls that happened in my life. But this one finally got my attention, and I chose to start noticing the messages in my life. I hope today's episode gave you a broader insight into the section of the book I covered. We all have personal journeys and they are very different, yet they have the same common thread. We are called to wake up and listen to our messages to grow and expand. In the next episode, I want to talk about my life and how it differed from Vince's before we came together. Until our next time together, please enjoy the book. You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to themiracleyou.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's themiracleyou.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.